Welcome back to Why Blank Lost. I'm David Bloomberg, and I just flew back, flew back from Houston, Texas. And boy, are my arms tired. Uh, <laughs> with me, of course, <laughs> but in <geez>. yeah, <laughs> here's my co-host on the drums, uh, Jessica Lewis. Hello, everyone. And I'm so glad that you're back and that you made it back so we could get this done this weekend. Yes, yes. Uh, my arms may not be as tired, but boy, am I tired. Um, I'm sure you are. Yeah. Um, now, Jessica, I have something for you. Oh, just okay. for being here, I'm going to give you an idol. <gasps> oh, thank goodness! Because yeah. I was, I was wondering if I was going to get a gift just for arriving. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and uh, so, so, uh, uh, you know, just uh, you know, you could only use that till the end of the next podcast. By the way, oh. Oh, damn it. But I guess that well, works for me then, right? Because then yeah. that means you go home. <laughs> well, no, because I have an idol also. Oh, so. geez. What are we going to do? <laughs> Everybody has an idol. Oh, my gosh. It does seem that way, doesn't it's it? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Mm. Mm. I'm so uh, frustrated. <laughs> you? I can't <laughs> imagine why. Oh, my gosh. I'm really just, yeah. At this point, what is Survivor anymore? It's hmm. idols. Idols. Uh, Yes. Uh, uh, well, we'll we'll get advantages. more to that in a moment. I did mm -hmm. want to uh, mention while I was in Houston, I was able to uh, meet briefly with Karishma, uh, mm -hmm. who we've had on the podcast and yes. who at that time shared with us her notes for her game of Survivor based on the rules. Look so at that. Another rules follower right there. Mm -hmm. You are just setting quite the trend. Yes. Well, I hope so. Uh, but only been you know, 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Right at the forefront. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. Rob did bring them, you know, way he back did. when. He so. did. So I, I have to give and, you full and, credit for that. And Sheanne quoted me in her final words. So Yes. So you do get full credit for yes. potentially helping create one of the best Survivor players ever. Yeah. Okay. I'll in take Rob. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'll take it. Good. You should. Um, and now... Rob has a podcast. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> See how that works? Full wow. circle. Um, now, for anyone who is new to this podcast, and uh, judging by our YouTube numbers, I, I think we may have more than a few new, mm -hmm. new uh, viewers. So, hi. hi. Uh, Thanks. We, we are here to discuss why Sarah lost. Uh, we will compare her game to the rules for winning that we were just talking about that I originally wrote way back after season one and have been updating ever since using all the non-spoiler information available to us uh, from what we saw on TV, interviews, social media and secret scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, the newest version of the rules can be found uh, at our dedicate or there's a link at our dedicated page, which is at Rob has website dot com slash YX lost feed and click on the bubble that says Survivor 44 rules. Strangely enough. Mm -hmm. uh, now, before we get to the rules, there are always some things for us to discuss. And I, I know normally this is where we would often bring up a complaint about idols or advantages. <laughs> but mm. I, I, I don't think there's anything more to say. Oh. I, you know. <laughs> no more advantages. You can't really see it. My microphone's in the way. But can we stop with, the, with this? Oh. Lord have mercy. Like, okay, listen, I understand that there is a desire to introduce new things into the game, right? And to create questions and unknowns and force the players to have to do things. But this is out of hand. It's incredibly out of hand when you're literally just handing out three idols. So you've, you've essentially created this swap, if we want to call it mm -hmm. a swap that I will say is horrific for every other player because those three people are then just handed idols and said, here, because what have we seen in years past? If you're the one person that ends up in another tribe, mm -hmm. you usually get swap screwed. Yeah. But now you are... Swap saved. Yes. And just messing things up for everyone else who is still in the game and who has created these relationships when you have only four people left on your tribe. It's really just insane. All right. So I'm going to uh, take a, a, a brief uh, devil's advocate and give a counterpoint here. Okay. Um, so first for those three idols, at least one of them will never actually be used because they're only good until mergatory. Sure. 
right now we have 13 players. Uh, they've previously gone to mergatory at 12. Mm -hmm. So at most, if Tika, if Tika goes back to tribal council, then only the one idol got used. If another sure. tribe goes back, then presumably two idols will be used. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not three new idols necessarily, but it is two more idols, which right. isn't much different. Um, and like you said, they're clearly consolation for being sw single swapped into the new tribe. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't be totally screwed. Uh, it reminds me of uh, the circle where when new players come in, they're allowed to rank other players, but they cannot be ranked their first time mm. to give them, you know, a, a little while to acclimate. So in this case, rather than giving these three players automatic immunity survivor gave them something they could potentially screw up which it was looking like josh might actually do mm. um now the retort is what you've already said which is uh hey production don't swap screw people right if you want if you want to actually do a swap then do a swap and mm -hmm. do what has been done in so many years past where it's luck of the draw you stick your hand in a bag and here's right. your new buff and then the numbers are what the numbers are but here you are choosing three people and not production but they are being chosen to mm -hmm. go onto this thing and that then completely changes the dynamic of the game. And every one of those three players automatically assumes, well, now I'm in a whole lot of trouble because yeah. I'm going to a different tribe and I'm just me. I'm all by myself. Mm -hmm. And I will say, and maybe I'm going a little ahead here, but one of the things that I thought was interesting that Jeff talked about on his podcast was mm -hmm. how this forces players to have to reacclimate themselves and to learn how to become close to someone on a new tribe and form those relationships and bonds. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because they're if walking will... in there with an idol. Right. All it forces them to do is use the idol one time. Right. And they can sit there and mess up everything yeah. else that has been created by those other people who are on that tribe because it's of no effect to them because right. they have an idol. So they are safe regardless of what they do walking in there. They could say nothing to anyone and then just be like, here's my idol. Thank you mm -hmm. very much for playing. And that's it. So you're not forcing them to have to create a relationship. What you are doing is forcing the other people to have to try to figure out did production did hand them an idol? Yeah. Right. Right. And we'll, we'll talk more about that exact point uh, later, but this, you know, the thing is, it's like someone came up with the idea, oh, let's just swap one person on each. And then someone said, well, that kind of screws them. Oh, what if we give them each an idol? Hmm. Oh, OK. It remi I mean, if you don't have the first idea, then you don't need to add even more gimmicks to counter right. the first one. Right. There's reminds, no point in doing it. Yeah. It reminds me of the kids song. Uh, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Where yes. she keeps <laughs> swallowing bigger and bigger animals yes. to deal with the smaller ones that she already swallowed. If she had just not swallowed that fly, she wouldn't have had to worry about it. Mm, but here's mm -hmm. Jeff swallowing flies, spiders, birds, cats, dogs, who knows what. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, so, a horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they didn't need to do it. I mean... Yes, it's not quite as terrible, but it's bad. And they no, didn't but I, need to I set do think that it's as in, terrible. Yeah. I really do, because okay. I, I really do feel like the whole concept and idea behind it, the justification that Jeff Probst himself provided mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense with the yeah. way that it was done. If well, you that, want yeah. to force people to have to reacclimate themselves and become social and form mm -hmm. bonds and relationships, then just do a plain old swap like you've always right. done. Don't do this type of swap and then remove any necessity for that next component to exist because here's also your free pass to stay in the game. Yeah. And then of course the way they uh, presented that to them, that I will admit was kind of funny. It was like, you have been given a free idol. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right. Yeah. And then they keep reading. Uh, and by the way, you're being swapped to another tribe. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Always there's read this other fine thing. print. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, I'm definitely very much opposed to what transpired yeah. this entire episode. I'm I'm very just kind of over it at this point, just with the the necessity that 
the production feels mm -hmm. to add these components to an already incredible game that if this if the whole idea is the social construct then let it be the social construct right and why Stop do you adding to it yeah why do you bring on these people who are have huge personalities right great people to watch and then you're like let's spin a wheel and see who gets knocked out exactly um yeah which i will say is not what happened this time but it seems that way i think from you know in many cases and it certainly contributes to it yes and i will say that there was um i I did find an article that I reposted on my Twitter that just kind of gave a really nice breakdown of every person who has left thus far who has been voted out mm -hmm. and really how their vote outs were directly or somewhat directly caused by some type of additional component to the game, whether it be shot in the dark, an idol, uh, an advantage, like all of these mm -hmm. extra things. Losing your vote. That was a couple of them as yes. well. True dork time. So thank you very much for yes. putting that out there in the universe because i do think it's something that they should be considering because you are losing what is supposed to be the biggest part of this game and that is the that again that social construct i mean like it's forming starts, a society yeah it starts elevating the seventh rule higher and higher i yes. mean remember my original rules didn't have a seventh rule well it did mm -hmm. it was just something different but it didn't have anything dealing with idols and advantages right but because they took such a you know, bigger and bigger role mm -hmm. and that you've got to basically dodge and weave and learn how to work around and with them. Now, mm -hmm. I will say one player uh, this, you know, this episode did a good job of that. Yes. And uh, she she actually did a good job with the idol stuff in two ways, because continuing with that theme, um, the the uh, you had Carolyn who who is the one I'm talking about working well around it. We'll get to that more in the rules. But she also, of course, created the red X mm -hmm. in the in the um, in the bird cage. I wanted to say cookie jar. And there's a reason for that that I'll get to. But, <laughs> uh, you know, she she then also used it to mark the spot where she planted her fake idol. Um, and the reason I wanted to say cookie jar is it's what she did independently is so smart that a similar tactic was used by Australian survivor producers this season. Oh, okay. So they could have used a lesson from Carolyn and making it obvious that it was a clue. They just planted something in the cookie jar and mm. it was like, what, what is this? Maybe it's an idol. We don't know. Um, but it was actually a clue. Look for something with this symbol. Now in their case, it was stupid because if you see some weird symbol on Survivor, you're going to pick it up anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas if you just see a couple of red sticks together, you might not unless you knew to look for them. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, yeah. So I think that, you know, she. You know, she was doing this based on. Well, one thing that came up in Sarah's interviews was that the tribe believed Helen went home with the birdcage idol because Carson told them that he saw her stuffing something down the back of her shorts, mm -hmm. true or not. Um, so putting the supposed clue in there followed that logic as the other players would have figured X marked the spot for the replacement. Sure. Yes. And this was something else that came up too that Jeff talked about that the, the reason why the red X worked so well is because of how production has been shifting and changing their design of idols because they wanted them to be able <sighs> yeah. to be, faked out or mm -hmm. like have players make fake idols. But again, that's not what's happening, right? Because what did Sarah say about the idol that she ended up finding? It had a glass bead on it. And so in right. her mind, she was like, well, glass beads don't just exist on the island. So this must be a real thing. And so again, it's like this idea that we want to, we want players to be able to fake other players out. But now we are going to introduce fake idols into the universe that look like they can't be fake idols because of what they're made out of. And so yes. uh, <laughs> I'm just getting so frustrated. It's like the yeah. idea is there, but then they're just messing it up. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, she, you know, I had previously compl complained specifically about the two 
medallions. Yes. That were uh, provided. And it turns out the beads are just as bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like what Sarah, the way she said it in her interviews, where she said, you're playing poker and someone hands you the two of clubs. You presume it's the two of clubs. Right. You know, you're not like full house. And they're like, ha ha, that's not really a two of clubs. That's a right. time. That's the fake two of clubs. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, and like you said, also, Jeff talked about this and it's like he, he's working at cross purposes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're transitioning away from beautiful ones to get make yes. to do more easily fake ones. But then he gives unfakeable ones. Right. Like it doesn't make any sense. What? Yeah. What? And I appreciate that they had that idea and said, hey, we need to stop making them so pretty. Yes. Okay, great. Then let's stick with that theme, shall we? Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> um, so let me. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Now, continuing with the idol theme, not surprisingly, um, we'll discuss more about Sarah's fake idol later. But she said in her interviews that she didn't find out that her idol was fake until the post mergers got back, mm-hmm. which is rather cruel of producers. Hmm. I can't think. And in fact, I mean, I don't think the producers intended her to find out then because uh, Jeff's co-host, Josh, who is not a producer on the show, but is on the podcast, said Sarah just found out watching the episode. Yeah. Oh, oh, naive Josh thinking players (laughs) from the same season wouldn't talk to each other. Um, But, you know, the point is, I think it was totally the producers. I mean, I don't know if expected, but maybe hoped she wouldn't find out until now. I, I just can't think of a reason not to tell her. Nothing is going to screw over the game if yeah. she is told right then and there, hey, rest easy. That was a fake. Yeah, that's got to be really gnawing at you the entire time. Yeah, she had to live yeah. with what she thought was a huge mistake for weeks. Mm-hmm. And if yeah. she hadn't heard about it, it's possibly months. Yeah. So yeah. the other thing is, That's interesting. With Sarah telling us this now in interviews that CBS is allowing, Mm -hmm. it might be kind of a spoiler. Because, Uh, yeah, pretty much. It sure seems like Carolyn doesn't get voted out pre jury, or else we presume she would have told her. Now, the way Sarah left, I suppose it's, and the way she talked about her and Carolyn not getting along in the game. It's possible they just didn't talk to each other. You know, Carolyn did get voted out and they just didn't talk to each other. Mm. And in fact, uh, Kellen on the recap podcast mentioned that um, one of her fellow players got voted out with a real idol, never told anyone, and she found out watching the episode. So it's possible. It seems spoilery, but right. it, it's. Possibly I thought the not. same thing. I was like, yeah. oh, well, that's interesting because only one person knew about that fake mm-hmm. idol. Hmm. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just insane at this point. Yeah. I just can't. I just can't handle it anymore. So <sighs> let's switch topics a little to a different one we've discussed before, which is making up a fake backstory. Now, I don't want to go too much into this because Rob did a whole podcast on it, uh, mm. which is available already to patrons. I'm not sure exactly when it'll come out to everyone else, but this was his question of the week uh, because, you know, Josh insisted he wasn't a surgeon and had some cockamamie story about trying to take the M caps repeatedly, but failing. So he became a personal trainer instead mm-hmm. with the problem being, he didn't think it all the way through because the math didn't make sense to Sarah and Jam right. Jam. And so, you know, apparently there were those other issues where, when he volunteered for the snake ball puzzle a couple episodes ago, and he, you know, said he, he needs to have very steady hands for his job. Um, and plus apparently he has some sort of medical tattoo symbol tattooed on his back. Mm, which, yeah. That's all bad. Which, why would you do that if you failed to, you know, the MCAP right. repeatedly? Right. I mean, I know people make mistakes with tattoos sometimes, but you know, maybe he thought, yeehaw, I was, uh, going to, you know, go it was my dream. Yeah, it was my dream. But no, um, I mean, and and 
it's funny because I listened to Rob's podcast on the plane. So just a couple hours ago. Um, and I already had my notes for this written, but he came to the same conclusion that I did, which is maybe this is why people on his original tribe felt like he was being sneaky and didn't trust him because we already know he's not a good liar and mm -hmm. he was holding back so much of himself. Right. So, you know, it's something you and I have discussed before. If you're going to lie about your background, it needs to be a good line and there mm -hmm. needs to be a good reason about it. And yes, just, I'm someone who did that. Yes. Um, and I and, was on a tribe with two other people that did the same thing. So, yes, <laughs> but um, I, I will say that you definitely need to have it make sense. You need to be able to answer questions about whatever your backstory mm -hmm. would. And also that needs to make sense. And if it doesn't, then you're going to have people like we saw become suspicious because they'll start paying attention. And I tried very hard to not really talk too much about what mm -hmm. I did. It came up a few times, but I was, I said I was a photographer, mm -hmm. -dee -dee, you know, like that's, but I had actually been a photographer at one point in my life. So I, I had the right. ability to speak to details about it and different components of the profession. But if you have never done it and, Obviously, he's very much in shape, so I'm sure that that's an mm -hmm. easy thing to to talk about. But the rest of it's got to make sense, too, because yeah. people are smart enough to answer or expect certain answers. And when they don't hear that, push a little further like yeah. we saw Sarah do. Yeah, I mean, he could have just added years on to say I've been a personal trainer for this many years. Yeah. And instead, it just he made it so it didn't make sense. And the thing is, did you really need to lie about being a surgical podiatrist? I mean, why is he doing it? Because he thinks they're going to assume he has money. Just say I have a lot of. No, he's debt. smart. I would I would think it would be more like I'm smart because everybody I'm that I mean, almost everybody there is smart. You know, Well, I, I, I do mean... feel like that's a fair point because I do feel like there's been a shift the past few seasons. Mm -hmm. There's always been people on the show who are variations of smart, I guess, you know, it right. depends on professions and. But I, I said this, I think, about, I don't know if it was this season or last season, but I was, I was impressed at how many, like, professions and people right. that were, had gone on to higher education. I mean, we have a, we have a rocket scientist on this season, mm -hmm. right? And that's not the first one we had. Didn't we have one, like, right. I feel like last season as well? So it certainly seems to be shifting gears towards that and maybe now it's not as significant because you better be smart if you're going to play survivor because my right. god that the puzzles that jeff also loves the fact that people are practicing their puzzles in the backyard yes oh god don't get me started on this it's see too now late. i'm just he gonna did. go down this rabbit hole yeah yeah and we could switch to that because that was something i had too was yeah him uh, saying you know they're purposely reusing them because it rewards people who study them now on the one hand i love the idea of rewarding super fans oh sure okay on the other hand they, they could still use some different puzzles yes um yes you know i, think I mean if I, you I want know. to reward someone for studying up on the show that's fine i mean mm -hmm. as you, of all people, you've created rules, right? And people can study mm -hmm. up on the rules and they can learn the best way to play Survivor. But not everybody can build a puzzle in their backyard because not everybody has a backyard, right? right. And not everybody has the ability to create these things. I don't have a 3D printer. Guess what mm -hmm. I couldn't do? Print 3D puzzles before I yeah. went out there. And and so it's it's, to me, unfair to people who can't, maybe afford mm -hmm. a 3D printer, don't have access to a 3D printer, but also just that it this everyone should be walking in on kind of an even playing field. Like you can read up on the rules, but then you have to implement the rules yourself. Mm -hmm. But to actually be practicing a puzzle to the point that you've memorized it and you know how to do it, it's just, it takes, I think, the excitement out of the game because like, oh, look, they solved this in no time flat. And it's because yeah. I memorized it and I worked down it in my backyard. Look mm -hmm. at me. I don't know. Yeah. I already I mean, complained about this a lot. You can have a manta ray puzzle that's not the exact same manta ray puzzle. Sure. Uh, you know. Uh so so anyway. Now, not that I think anyone truly memorized every nook and cranny of a puzzle like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot easier to memorize like the four piece or six piece sure. puzzles that they yeah. have. So 
All right. What showcase showdown? It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> um. Now, I I also want to mention, uh, going back to Carolyn, uh, that you know, obviously, she played a major role in the vote this week. I would say she played the major role yes. in the vote, but we'll we'll get to that. Um. Especially since Rob suggested in the recap podcast that it was all Josh's idea. Oh, I'll argue that later. Um, but, you know, Sarah also mentioned in her interviews how well Carolyn really knows the game. Mm, now, mm-hmm. of course, we've known that since just after our preview podcast, when Carolyn revealed that she has one of our posters and tweeted that she's living by the rules. I love that. Uh, yeah. But as far as the players, Sarah said they could tell by how Carolyn communicated with them about you know how well she knew the game, but then they got distracted by all her personality and didn't see her threat level being as high as they should have. Yes, um, she's she's definitely an interesting mix because I do think that the personality can be overshadowing as far as her other abilities because mm-hmm. that is what you see of Carolyn. She puts it all out there and doesn't hold back she says she's very emotional she's violating one of the rules time and time again but but i do think well but that- she usually says i'm being very emotional but i know i need to be the other way i need right. to yes. you know i need to play the game i need to be <laughs> rational <laughs> I still think she's, you know, imitating me when she says that or what she <laughs> hears me saying in her head. But and that's quite possible. I do yeah. think that it's quite possible. But that's that to me is what makes Survivor so much more intriguing than idols and trinkets and advantages mm-hmm. is the personalities and the people that play the game. And combining those two things is an incredible thing to watch when you have someone who on the surface you perceive to be a certain way and then you find out oh my gosh this person is incredible at this game Mm -hmm. david wright is the perfect example that i can come for my season where i mean i i've said time and time again he was kaiser sosa you know Mm -hmm. you never saw him coming and all of a sudden it he was just fantastic at playing the game of survivor never would have saw it never would have guessed it and carolyn is probably very much the same way and so that is what production should be focusing on is right. the personalities and the people as opposed yeah. to the training. You have her, you have yes. Jam Jam, you have Carson, you have Matthew, you have Franny, you have, I mean, I could just keep naming all right. these different. So if I didn't name you, don't take offense, you know, but you have all these big personalities. Mm-hmm. Let us see them. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it be. Let it happen. Let it just happen naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have anything specific for our Jeff Probst is wrong about blank segment. Basically, just take almost everything we just talked about and throw it in that category. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. It's that it's it was like he was talking out of both i hate to say this it seems really but both sides of his mouth sometimes mm-hmm. where you know and and i was getting very frustrated I'm like but you can't you can't say that right. if this is what you right. want you, you can't have it both ways yeah yeah it's frustrating so all right do you have anything else before we get to the rules oh we've kvetched enough i think now we can just complain about the episode itself <laughs> okay. well, no 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 more complaining about the episode now we're getting to the rules oh uh, yes after we talk about uh, the rules in shorter and more colorful form, yes. uh, which, of course, is the poster. Uh, and you can get that, as I had mentioned before, Rob has a website dot com slash why blank lost. And there is for those of you on video, there is the poster. Just uh, mm-hmm. scroll to it, click it, uh, and then you can scroll down, get a T-shirt, uh, scroll down and uh, get a checklist T-shirt. That's right. So many so, options available. To yes, you. I was. Uh, uh, someone had commented on uh, one of my uh, YouTube videos, and I responded, and they were like, "Oh my gosh, your response! I'm, uh, you know, one more of those, and I'm going to have to buy a T-shirt." And so I responded <laughs> again, and said, "Going to have to buy the T-shirt." Love uh, that. That's a great, <laughs> so. great move. Love that. <laughs> so again, that's at robhaswebsite.com slash yx lost feed i think i left that off the first time but it's right there in the video too it is and it's it's yeah it's right at the bottom you can see that um all right so 
Anything else before we get to the rules? No, we can get to the rules. Sarah deserves it. <laughs> she needs some she needs some attention. Yes. Well, it would be easy to say that Sarah just got screwed because she was on a four person tribe and two of them had idols. And, you know, we've talked some about the idols already. <clears throat> but there are other factors that explain why she specifically was voted out. After all, this wasn't an advantage getting situation. Only one person played an idol, meaning two others were vulnerable besides her. Even if Carolyn had played her idol as well, that still would have left Jam Jam as a possibility. So it's not as simple as pointing to idols. And eh, we still have to do our job and go through everything else to figure out why Sarah lost. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, begin with the first and still most important rule for now, you know, Jeff, you know, um, which is to scheme and plot. And we're in a bit of an interesting situation here because there's what we saw, what we were led to believe, and what Sarah believes. Mm -hmm. And they don't all coincide very well. Right. Um, as far as what we saw and knew leading up to this point, we discussed on the Why Helen Lost podcast that Sarah was tight with Helen and Carson from the beginning, and it seemed like the three of them would make the decision on who to vote out, even though Sarah didn't have a vote. And Sarah reaffirmed in her interviews that they thought Jam Jam was on their side for that vote and that Carolyn would go home. We also talked extensively about how you can't just discount people on a five person tribe. But it does seem like Sarah had more of a relationship with at least Jam Jam than perhaps Helen did based on her interviews. Hmm. Even so, it wasn't enough to pull him away. And of course, we know that Carson was the main mover behind the Helen blind side. So Sarah wasn't going to be able to change that. So that's the history. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah did go to work after that Helen Tribal Council by being willing to listen and talk to Carson. But she also seemingly spent more time with Jam Jam to the point that Sarah believes if Carson hadn't been swapped away, he and Jam Jam would have flipped to her side to vote out Carolyn. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, I had intriguing was the word I in my notes. Mm -hmm. But um, either works. Because, you know, with the bickering we saw between Carolyn and Jam Jam, it, it certainly has the ring of possibility. Right. But here's the thing. Sarah thought that for the first vote, too. Right. Uh, when she believed she was voting out Carolyn. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, Jam Jam agreed with Sarah, Helen and Carson to vote out Carolyn. But then he ran right to Carolyn and Carson followed soon after so i don't really know what would have happened if carson had yeah been there. but i also feel like and i know that it doesn't come down to trinkets and advantages mm -hmm. and losses of votes but there is something to be said about they're not hurt like sarah not having a vote at the beginning and that i think affecting a potential outcome in regards to where carson fell as far as who yeah, he was going I'll, to be voting with i, I know we've still stand 1000% uh in you know and say, i and here's and i know i yeah. know that it's it well it let me is, finish you know but the rest of the people don't so let me finish and then, uh just to say that carson said in all of his pregame press that what he did to helen was exactly what he was planning to do well right and oh, so yeah. but it it worked out really really well for him right yes. like this is what yeah. i want to do and then oh my gosh and then we have mm -hmm. this other component to it so it just all kind of fell in line very nicely right. i do feel like sarah was being misled quite a bit and very well i think that yes. the people that she was playing with were making her feel very comfortable mm -hmm. as they should and really making her think things that I never got the impression that Sarah was closer to any of these individuals, but now in her exit interviews, right. as you've addressed, she indicates that she felt like she was. And so maybe she was just playing with people who were that much better than she was in that regard, because she did say that she's not an emotional person. She is very um, uh, kind of stone faced. Holds yes. It in. Yes. yes. And and so she's a little more serious. And mm -hmm. and so for her playing with someone like Jam Jam or Carolyn, that's a little more out there and and, and putting more of themselves into everything they do mm -hmm. and not just having an all very game mechanic, probably put her at a disadvantage 
just because she's, oh, yeah. that's not the level that she's at. And so for her, she's very game centered and they're like, well, we're game centered, but we also want to have fun and we like each other. And she wasn't building that type of rapport with these individuals as much as she thought she was. Yeah. And, you know, Sarah said in interviews that Carolyn just didn't like her. And obviously mm -hmm. we'll get to that more in the fifth rule. But for the purposes of strategizing, she also said that she and Carolyn were you know, competing to win over Carson and Jam Jam. And uh, Sarah, at one point earlier, suggested they pair up and play the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Carolyn didn't go for that. But mm -hmm. I I didn't quite understand what the time frame was when she was saying right. this happened, because it's quite possible that by the time Sarah suggested this, Sarah was already in an obvious trio with Helen and Carson. So Carolyn might have just been like, uh, uh, no, thank you. I, right. You know, right. who are you fooling here? Even mm -hmm. if Sarah was 100 percent sincere about it, it may not have seemed that way. Sure. Yeah. And so. So, yeah, we're left back with these different perspectives and we don't know what would have happened because. You know, whatever bickering Carolyn and Jam Jam may have had, it's possible if Carson had still been there, Jam Jam might have stood by her. Carson might have stood by her. Right. Um, you know, we can just go by what happened after the swap. And it certainly looked like Sarah managed to get closer to Jam Jam. But once again, not Carolyn. Right. And she did equate the relationship that she saw between Jam Jam and Carolyn as more of a brother sister type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if even if there is that extensive bickering that's going on, I feel like Jam Jam and Carolyn are the type of people that would then kind of hash it out and talk through it. Like I, I can imagine on Wednesday, we're going to see some scene mm. where they're back on the beach and they're they're talking about all of this and it becomes very emotional. I can see that happening and I can yes. see those two continuing to move forward together yes. despite yeah. what happened. Yes, I you know, not to spoil our predictions, but I think so, too. Mm. Um, all right. Well, we could go to the second rule, which says not to scheme a plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. We discussed back in, again, why Helen lost, that Sarah and Helen were seen, at least by Carolyn and Jam Jam, as a duo, which, of course, is warned against in this rule. Mm -hmm. Once Helen was gone, that was less of an issue for Sarah. But. Sarah also still had to fight for her game life, and she knew Carolyn didn't really like her. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if she knew that was the case, maybe her and Jam Jam making Carolyn the public alternate boot I know. was not the greatest idea. Yeah. Can we just make a suggestion here? Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. It just served to further alienate mm -hmm. Carolyn, give her more reasons to stand against Sarah, and I mean, remember, Carolyn had already been the decoy once or, you know, from Sarah's perspective, the actual target. Yeah. Uh, and I understand they figured Josh probably had an idol and none of them wanted to be the person Josh voted against. Right. And this Fine. is the problem with creating that decoy. If you think exactly. he has an idol, well, then he puts her name down and then guess who goes home? Right. One the person decoy. gets to decide. Yeah. Right. Um, but you can't obviously put it on someone. And, you know, Sarah even said that very thing in her interview with Rob when he asked what she could have done differently. Uh, she said she could have volunteered as the decoy target rather than putting it on Carolyn. Now, the other thing I would add is that she could have just done what Carolyn did, tried to guide him, get to know him privately, not mm -hmm. publicly. So Carolyn wouldn't have known that she her name was being thrown around right. and wouldn't have been on the alert. Right. Yeah, I, I do think that this was, again, we can go back to mm -hmm. the the problematic structure of this whole s tribe once the swap happened and the idea that they all believed that he probably had an idol right. does put them all in a very precarious situation Yeah, because the guy you want to vote out is also the one that has an idol potentially. Mm -hmm. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to go home, but if he has an idol and he plays it, one of us three is going to go home. And so how do you combat that? So asking Sarah what she could have done differently, it, it's a really hard ask because it what, is. what can you really do I mean, besides throw somebody else under the bus? She could. Well, yeah, she could have gone to Josh separately <laughs> mm -hmm. or she could have just done what she was talking about, which is 
vote with Jam Jam against Carolyn. Right. But Jam Jam wasn't voting for Carolyn. But if she thought that she could get him to vote for Carolyn. Right. Now, in this case, because of what ended up happening, it would have been a tie. But if they had played it differently, Mm -hmm. you know, they could have actually done it if that's what they wanted. Right. Um, You know, there are ways around it. You don't have to give the person with the idol all the power. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and I think in some of the other tribes, if one of them goes to tribal council next time, maybe they will realize that and not give that person all the power. They'll vote out one of their own. Mm. Well, I think once they come back to the next challenge and they see that Josh is still there, Mm -hmm. I think they're all going to surmise that. Oh, yeah. If they haven't already. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, That there is an idol lurking about. Yeah. At least there was. Right. All right. Well, the third rule tells players to be flexible. And we discussed earlier several times how Sarah couldn't get on the same page as Carolyn and even Jam Jam earlier. But it does sound like she tried. I Mm. think the result shows that she must have been at least somewhat successful with Jam Jam, given that they were voting together and also considering the look on his face after she was voted out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that she really had to be, too, considering if she and Helen were as close as Mm -hmm. it appeared and then Helen goes home, she has to not allow that to take over the game. And she did talk about how she was working on continuing to build those relationships despite the situation that she was in. So I do think that there had to have been some flexibility there. But again, I do think it comes down to differing personalities and a difficulty for her to connect on a personal level with someone like Carolyn that ended up really, I think, negatively affecting her ability to be as flexible as she needed to be. Yeah. I mean, she did, you know, talk to Carson about being open to working with him. uh, And she talked to more us about how she knew she had to act like everything was fine when she knew it wasn't. So, you know, that is good. And, she at least believed that things had flipped in her direction. If Carson hadn't been swapped away Mm -hmm. again, we we don't know. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, the fourth rule tells players not to let their emotions control them. Uh, Given how we've described Sarah, how do you think she did with this rule? (laughs) Well, it's interesting because she's not an emotional person. Right. And so it's one of those interesting things because she's not an emotional person, but because she's not an emotional person, I do think that that affected her game because she was playing with such emotional people. Mm -hmm. So there's like this weird, like balancing thing that didn't really shake out too well for her because she's just not someone who she's very game. We game oriented game centered is what we talked about. And I feel like that's the way she presented herself. Yeah. I mean, you can be emotional and still play, When you, you know, like we were talking about Carolyn, where she'd tell herself, right, I can't be emotional. Um, (laughs) You know, and I think Jam Jam is similar in that regard. I mean, he said that in the pregame, like outwardly, he's going to be all over the place, but inwardly, he's going to be playing the game. Right. Um, Now, so from that standpoint, I think Sarah did, as we just discussed in the third rule, a a good job of putting aside what happened in the Helen vote by Mm -hmm. keeping her emotions in check. Um, you know, she knew she was potentially in trouble, but she kept trying. And, uh, so even when she wasn't sure that she could trust Carson, she heard him out. She talked to him, uh, Mm -hmm. even, you know, in a secret scene going so far as to agree to be his number one. Right. So, you know, she put aside what she was feeling Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, focused on keeping herself in the game. Right. Yeah. Okay, the fifth rule reminds players they need to pretend to be nice and play the social game. Uh, While we didn't see anything on the show itself to suggest that Sarah had any issues here, there was a secret scene and her interviews, which told us that she and Carolyn, as we have now mentioned several times, just didn't get along. Right. Um, Now, each of them has their own perspective. Uh, From Carolyn's in the secret scene, She said she's very emotional while Sarah is more stone faced. Uh, And Carolyn told Sarah that since she got sober, she doesn't hold in emotions and therefore was kind of trying to pull it out of Sarah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Sarah, Sarah told Carolyn and Jam Jam she isn't expressive. And, you know, once the conversation was done, they all hugged and seemed to be more willing to work together. <laughs> but really, did one conversation change the course of what had happened up to that point? I, uh, no. Uh, no. You know, especially since Sarah was still talking in interviews about Carolyn and her not getting along. Right. Yeah. And I do think that this is just another component of the game of Survivor that is interesting because sometimes you just don't jive with other people. Mm-hmm. And you're on a tribe with this person. And unfortunately you have to try to make it work despite the fact that there's just something about yes. the two of you that just doesn't get along or you, and you really can't put your finger on it. And that's just what we, we see happening here is that you just have two very different types of personalities and you, and I think it's interesting that you've got jam jam kind of in the middle, right? Because mm-hmm. we heard that jam jam was like, secretly like cheering Sarah on to Sarah. Like if I was at home watching you, I would be cheering for you. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's using both of these, this ability, if you will, to, to play into Sarah and play that, like you're, you're playing such a great game. And Mm -hmm. then with, with Caroline being all like goofy and funny and, and having a good time. And so he's found himself in a really good spot between these two, but unfortunately one clearly, was more important to jam jam than the other. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, you know, from what we saw, it looked like Sarah was getting along well with everyone, but you know, she tried to vote out Carolyn and I'm, I'm sure that still stung even on Mm -hmm. top of their interpersonal differences. Sure. I, I, I think Sarah was trying, but she needed to make other changes if she wanted to break through to Carolyn because they were just so different. And she, she wasn't getting there. Yeah. All right. Uh, and just just so people understand, if people are like, well, why did Sarah have to do all the trying? Why not Carolyn? Well, because this is the Why Sarah Lost podcast, not the Why Carolyn yeah. Lost podcast. Yeah, so, unfortunately. Uh, you know, if, if the situation had resulted in Carolyn being the one voted out, then we'd be saying the same thing about Carolyn. Right. But mm-hmm. She ended up on top. So, yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, The sixth rule warns against being too much of a threat. And I think we have an interesting situation here. Clearly, Sarah was a threat to Carolyn and Josh. Mm, And that she mm -hmm. was trying to vote out Josh and helped make Carolyn the decoy boot. But, of course, Jam Jam also helped make Carolyn the decoy boot, which takes us back to, yeah, but this is why Sarah lost, not why Mm, Jam Jam mm -hmm. lost. Um, And because Jam Jam's not going to lose because he's my winner pick and he's going to win. (laughs) Um, So so it it is more than, you know, just 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 what I had said about, you know, her going after Josh and and uh, making Carolyn the, the decoy. I mentioned earlier that Rob said on the recap show that he thinks this was Josh's master plan. Sorry, Rob, I don't see it that way. I don't think Josh particularly cared which of them got voted out, as long as it wasn't him. Right. It didn't matter to him. Right. Why would it matter to him? He just met these people. Yeah. It doesn't matter to him at all. It's just not going to be him. Yeah. And I also have to consider the poor read he had on his position in his original tribe. Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking about his strategic abilities, did he really have the ability to make a move like this come together? I don't think so. So I think that it was Carolyn. And while she might've been mad at Jam Jam for what happened leading up to and in tribal council, Mm -hmm. she still had a bond with him. Like you called it earlier, a brother sister type thing. Uh, And, you know, Helen even told us previously in interviews that she underestimated that bond. Right. So I think Carolyn decided she could likely do what you have already predicted would happen, win him back over, still work with him after booting Sarah. So Sarah basically posed a threat to their relationship, too. Yeah. And the thing, just going back to to Josh in this particular Mm -hmm. situation and why I wouldn't credit him for all of this is in addition to it not mattering, he knew he had an idol. So yeah. even if they all decided they wanted to vote for Josh, he was still going to decide who was going to go home right. if he was playing his idol. And so the fact that 
Carolyn wanted to all of a sudden work with him and was like offering mm-hmm. up this idea. Oh, OK, I'm still going to play my idol and we can vote her out. I don't right. care. Right. So he he didn't need a Carolyn to pull this off. If he didn't have an idol, well, then he would have needed a Carolyn right. to potentially pull this off. Yeah. So I do think that that diminishes some of his strategic ability in that in that com- in that moment because it didn't need to be. It was like, I have an idol so we can right. do whatever we can vote out. Anyone doesn't matter. Yeah. And so now if Carolyn or Josh wants to come out later and whenever they do their interviews and say, you know, this was Josh's idea, fine. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, but until then, I'm going to stick with that sign that says, David, you're right. And also, <laughs> also for that matter, Jessica, you're right. But apparently that sign got buried after your winner pick. Um, <sighs> you're so mean. You, you really had to do that again. Yeah. What? What? Uh, what? You know, maybe some of the new listeners don't know how bad I am at all of this. Oh, yeah. At, at winter picks. Not all of this. Yes. Just winter picks. Winter picks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm very bad. Um, Butterfly effect. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, now, in addition to all of this, I was thinking about the positioning of each player left in the tribe, depending on how things went. And as I was kind of working through that, I saw that Mike Bloom was also working, you know, had said something similar to what I was thinking. Um, but he he said it, you know, kind of more focused than I had gotten to already, which was that if Josh would have gone, Jam Jam would be the middle spot between Carolyn and Sarah. OK, so if they you know, if Carolyn had somehow convinced Josh to play the idol on her and then they tricked him and voted him out. But by getting rid of Sarah specifically, Carolyn now occupies that middle spot and she can either move forward with jam jam if he regains her trust Mm -hmm. or with josh otherwise Mm -hmm. so she went from being potentially almost powerless to being the most powerful in whatever's left of the tribe right not even she also has carson as well right but i'm just saying if this tribe goes to sure tribal council again before mergatory um you know, she gets to choose, basically, because yeah. the odds that Josh and Jam Jam are going to get together in, in a couple of days here, practically non-existent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. You now, are correct. <laughs> well, thank you. And so is Mike Bloom. Um, I I do Love have to note. <laughs> I, I do have to note that while I said Josh particularly, uh, you know, didn't care whether Sarah or Jam Jam was voted out. uh. I, I think that Sarah mentioned in her interviews that also on top of everything else, she probably questioned Josh a bit too much about his poor lies mm-hmm. regarding his mm-hmm. life and story. Uh, she noted that she went directly at him with the surgeon thing and also was questioning him with the scar on his stomach. Mm. And even beyond that, she also told him that he had to have an idol because there's no way they'd send him there alone without protection. Yep. Um, as she told Mike Bloom, say Mike Bloom Uh, I think that I've (laughs) probably shown too much of my awareness to him so that is on the side of oh Josh helped pick it I still think Carolyn was the driving factor in choosing who to target and Josh was happy to be on board with her no matter who she went with if she had said let's get rid of Jam Jam I think he would have been like sounds good to me right great cool I'm gonna play my idol (laughs) yeah yeah I'll play my idol and Write down Jam Jam. But I think what he actually said was, or what Carolyn said was, no, we can't do that because that's David's winner pick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Back in time butterfly effect to let them know that that Jam Jam was the winner pick. Yeah. Love that for you. (laughs) (laughs) Works so much better for you than it does for me. Yeah. Well, for now. Mm. Uh, So, all right. So the seventh rule covers idols and advantages and game mechanics. Now, we haven't had anything at all to say about those. Oh, my gosh. Uh, No, not at all. But, uh, you know, we did discuss that Sarah flat out told Josh just a minute ago. uh, Not he told her just a minute ago. Just a minute ago, we said we just never mind. You know what I'm talking about. Um, Sometimes when you try to correct something, it makes it worse. Uh, Back it up, reverse it. Yeah. Uh, So she told Josh that 
uh, he had to have an idol. I, I'm not entirely sure why she did that. I'm presuming it was under the guise of wanting to work with him. Like, hey, I know you have to have an idol. We're targeting Carolyn. You don't need to play her idol. Type mm-hmm. of thing. Um, but at that point, he knew that she knew, which could have meant that, like she was saying, they weren't actually going to target him mm-hmm. or that they were going to target him and try to convince him that they weren't. Right. Frankly, if I were in his position, I wouldn't care. I'd use the damn idol. I was given yeah. an idol with like a, a, a four day expiration. Date. Well, that's the other part of this. That's so ridiculous is that not only are you just handing them idols, you get an idol and you get an idol. And by the way, we're forcing you to have to use it because it's right. only good for the next two tribals. Yeah. I mean, it's basically like I said, it's basically giving them immunity, except there's a small chance that they could screw it up. Yeah. Um. And yeah, there was there was nothing at all to be gained by sitting on it. And, you know, then Sarah could end up being the target, which is exactly what happened. The only potential thing that Sarah could have done, and mm-hmm. we've already talked about her needing to talk to Josh in a different way, mm-hmm. is also maybe mention the fact that I have an idol, too, because she thinks yeah. she has a real idol at that point. Right. So then at least maybe he could be like, oh, well, all right, if you're going to play your idol and I want to play my idol, well, then it's down to these two over here. And then, again, maybe he wouldn't have cared because it wouldn't have mattered. One of them is going to go. But, you know, why then vote for Sarah if you think that, well, she's just going to play an idol. So then we have to do this whole revote thing. Right. Although it would have been it would have been funny if she had, like, shown the idol to Josh and then Josh had gone back to Carolyn and told Carolyn. Yeah. And Carolyn's like, ah, ha, ha. No, she doesn't. Right. And um, and so this is why, you know, it's one of those like, do you share the information or right. not? Because there are people that know. And obviously, Carolyn knew. But again, yeah. that's a, a world that didn't happen. But it's yeah. something to be curious of. Yeah. Now, I will say, I don't understand why she didn't play her quote unquote idol. Uh, obviously, doesn't actually matter. But it seems like she presumed Josh would vote Carolyn. So this makes it, I would call it a hypothetical mistake. Hmm. Um, But when we discuss how people did in terms of the rules, we have to deal with hypotheticals as well. And hypothetically speaking, uh, Sarah did admit to Gordon Holmes that based on what she knew, she should have played it. Right. Because she also thought that maybe they had switched it to Jam Jam because of the whole bickering that had gone on in tribal council. Which doesn't make sense to me. No. Because, yeah, she said she also said, you know, that the the tribal council was more live, as she called it, than we saw. And that Carolyn and and Josh were doing a lot of whispering to each other. Um, Now. She like I said, she called it live, but it could have just been them switching a plan. It could have been them confirming a plan. It could have been them going over the details to make sure they both knew exactly what they were going to do. Again, we won't know that till we hear from one of them. But from what you know, what you just said, I don't understand the logic. Yeah. That well, I think that I might have been the target before, but now Jam Jam has made himself the target. Yeah. Um if you're still if, if you're considering at all that you might be the target, uh there's only a 50-50 chance here. Play right. your idol. And as soon as he gets up and plays his You play your idol. Yeah. And so she had said there's a couple things about that. She told Dalton Ross she didn't want to play scared and overplay the idol. But it's far, far better to play the idol when you don't need to than to have your torch snuffed with an idol in your pocket. Sure. Um, Now, she continued to Dalton. uh, I think it's far better to play survivor scared than it is to play not scared. That's probably where I went wrong. And, you know. Jeff Probst doesn't want to hear those words, but she was 100 percent. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Now, again, it's a fake. It's not like she lost because she didn't play it, Mm -hmm. but it's part of the overall evaluation for this rule. Not to mention that she punished herself for the decision for weeks like we discussed. Mm hmm. Terrible. Yes. Now, another part of this rule was her inheritance advantage which she also said in interviews that if she was going to play her idol, she would have played that advantage as well. So the idol would boomerang back to her, which is definitely smart thinking. Sure. But that she had to play in the voting booth. 
So I feel like in answer to your question of or what you said about, well, when Josh played it, you should have played it. Once she didn't play it, mm. since you already had that plan of doing the two together, I think in her mind, things were set. Yeah, that makes that's fair. I forget that that's where that whole inheritance advantage thing comes yeah. into play. Again, yeah. obnoxious. Yes, I forgot she had it, too. Honestly, yeah. you know, um, so. Now. At the beginning of the podcast, uh, you brought up how Sarah had noticed one bead on her quote unquote idol uh, with glass that you couldn't find a glass bead elsewhere, leading to her to believe it was real. We already vented plenty about that, but I also want to bring up it was perceptive of Sarah to notice that. Sure. So yeah. she did well in a number of different aspects related to this. And she didn't do well in the hypothetical aspects of it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now future Survivor players are going to have to just take note that fake idols might have medallions and glass beads. Mm hmm. Fake idols could be anything. Yeah. So see, see, Adam, you were right. It could have been that damn. It symbol. absolutely could have been. All right. We could move on to Appendix A, which is the tribe keeping their end goals in mind with voting. And we talk about voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. In this case, I would say the emphasis was clearly on the first part. Carolyn and Josh keeping their end goals in mind. Mm -hmm. I don't think they picked, uh, you know, Sarah or Save Jam Jam for weak versus strong. Now, right. some people have said, well, Jam Jam's stronger in the challenges. I don't think Carolyn cared about that. Honestly. No. I don't think she cared at all. And so, um, you know, that's why it's just about focusing on your end goals. Yes. Uh, now, part one is to ensure you have an end goal by still being in the game. Um, part two is to put yourself in a position of power. And we already discussed how, excuse me, how Carolyn did that. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think that pretty much fills that you know part of it in terms of what her tribe mates did this time yes um, i do think that this is where the game is shifting just a a smidge more because you're getting closer to the merge and mm -hmm. so you really are starting to think more along those lines right because it's not the first vote where you just have someone's got to go home now there yeah. there is more of a game mechanics at play there is more long-term thinking and if if carolyn really thinks that she can win jam jam back mm -hmm. then she's made the best decision for her because she and Sarah did not have a good relationship right I mean I think most of the players on this tribe probably were of that mindset we're not of the mindset of oh vote out the weakest person so that we right. can win challenges anyway mm -hmm. um, because you had you know at least Carson Jam Jam and Carolyn all being very game focused right whereas on the other tribes you had someone like uh, Brandon who's very challenge focused and Danny, who's very challenge focused. Right. And those sorts of people can dominate the conversation. You yes. didn't have that on uh, Tika. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as Sarah herself, she had previously had thoughts about the whole weak versus strong aspect of the game. And we discussed them and why Helen lost because she talked about the different types of strength, mm -hmm. uh, you know, saying specifically, it depends on how you measure strength. She said, being with people that you trust, I think that matters so much in this game. Yeah. And, you know, Sarah said in interviews that she was trying to show she was a reliable, solid vote as compared to what she said was the more volatile Carolyn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so she was trying to set herself up as the person Jam Jam and obviously before he left, Carson could trust. The problem was Carolyn didn't feel like she could trust Sarah, any more than Sarah felt like she could trust Carolyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely problematic situation there. Yeah. So, all right. With all that, unless you have anything else, it is time to wrap things up. So what are your final thoughts? I feel for Sarah. I really do. Mm -hmm. Because I do think that not only did she end up on a tribe full of personalities that didn't necessarily mesh with her personality. Mm -hmm. She also found herself in a situation full of idols and trinkets and swaps and lost oh votes and, oh. <laughs> and all of those things that culminated in a very, very bad 
fashion for Sarah. I think Sarah came into this game and I I had my concerns with her in this tribe from the beginning. I didn't know how well she was going to fit. And one of the things that she mentioned in her exit interview, which I thought was interesting, is that the kind of trio that was created between she and Helen and Carson came from the mere fact that they just happened to be getting wood together. And here's three people on a six person tribe, which was then five, I think, at that point. There's three of you together. Hey, let's form an alliance. And I do think that there were components of both Carson and Helen that Sarah could connect with, which is why it seemed to work out. And I was I was excited for the three of them because Helen was my winner pick. So Mm -hmm. I thought, yay, this is great. But unfortunately, I do think that the people that were on her tribe were bigger personalities. And also she had people that wanted to play this game. Carson mm-hmm. being that person. And I know Helen wanted to, and she did as well, but sometimes you can just get outplayed. And I feel like that's what's happening for Sarah, or that's what happened to Sarah is that even though she was willing to play this game and wanted to play this game and came in with a plan in place, sometimes other people's plans can overshadow your own. And I think that's yep. really what happened with Sarah is that other people were looking at the game they wanted to play and were determining how best they could further their own game, utilizing the people that were within the tribe. And Sarah just didn't fit into that plan for any of them. And unfortunately, I think that Sarah found herself in a position of, well, I'm not beneficial to this person or that person. And a decision needs to be made right now. And unfortunately, Sarah became the decision of the person who had to go home for the benefit of the other people to continue their own game, which This is a game for a million dollars. And we've said it before. You've come here to play. And unfortunately, Sarah, you had a tribe full of people that wanted to play. Yeah. 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 A lot of what happened with Sarah can be traced back to the first Tika vote. Uh, Carson organized the blind side of her tight ally, ally, Helen. And then he tried to pull Sarah back in. And she believed they were good along with Jam Jam. But then Carson was swapped away for Josh and everything turned upside down. Uh, Sarah was very perceptive when it came to a number of things. She figured out that Josh was a surgeon, not a physical trainer. She figured out something was going on in his backstory. She realized that he almost certainly had an idol and she knew that she needed to have an alternative target for Josh in case he did have that idol and played it. The problem was more in how she handled what she saw rather uh, and so instead of just talking about josh hiding his background to her original tika tribe mates she questioned him on it directly Mm -hmm. rather than just discussing his likely idol with carolyn and jam jam she asked josh about that as well and the one time that she should have gone directly to josh was would have been in trying to plant the idea that carolyn should be the alternate But she and Jam Jam talked openly about that with Carolyn. This all put both Josh and Carolyn on alert and helped lead to the two of them working together. Another thing that led to them working together was the way Carolyn saw Jam Jam acting towards herself. And I use the word acting on purpose because it's still not clear to me if there was acting or part of it was serious and that whole Mm. Felicia thing. Sarah suggested that he and Carolyn would have these sort of tiffs uh, and, you know, they might go too far. So that may have been the case here. But Carolyn didn't target Jam Jam. She went after Sarah, likely because she figures she can mend fences with Jam Jam. But there was too much history and not getting along and lack of trust when it came to Sarah. As we discussed, this move does put Carolyn in a better position in many ways. If she can't mend fences with Jam Jam and they end up going right back to tribal council, well, she can vote him out. I think it's more likely that he'll recover after the shock and they will go right back to being a tight pair, at least for now. But she was never going to be a tight pair with Sarah. And as I said, there was just too much trust lost there. And that is why Sarah lost. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And really, you know, again, it comes to what you said. People have different ways to play. Yeah. And one one out over the other one. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, before we get to our predictions, we have a couple of things. One is just a reminder. You can go to Rob has a website dot com slash YX lost feed to get the poster version of the rules we just discussed. 
or the poster on a t-shirt version or the checklist version. So again, Rob has a website.com slash YX lost feet. Uh, and also Jessica, how can people get a hold of us? Mm, they can definitely find us on Twitter. I am at Jessica Lewis 89 and he is at David Bloomberg. You should certainly follow us both. We do live tweet during the episodes. We also tweet during the week. So spoiler alert, Live tweeting, it happens. And David Bloomberg has a tendency to put into the universe, the Twitter world, and so many other worlds, these TikToks that he has created as well. Also on Instagram, this man is everywhere. You and do. because he is everywhere, he has a Linktree account that he should share with you all. So that way you can see all of the great ways that you can follow him on so many social media platforms. Yes, you can go to uh, Linktree slash David Bloomberg. There's a dot before the EE, uh, and you can get easy links to all those different accounts. Uh, also, if you're already there uh, on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, uh, you can just look for David Bloomberg TV. Yes. Um, so trying to get that YouTube account going. So or, uh, you know, you know, just in case, like, you know, Congress bans TikTok or something like that. Oh, my right gosh. After I you know, but <laughs> you are going to be so sad. Oh, yes, that will be so annoying. You've worked um, so hard on those. TikToks. I know. So. So, yeah, follow uh, again. Follow everywhere. Yes, please. All right. Uh, now. Predictions. Mm. I was pretty damn certain about my prediction last week that Josh would be booted. Uh, and then I saw the sneak peek video released by CBS of the opening scenes related to him talking about his position in the tribe and getting it totally wrong. At that point, I was about 99% sure he was gone. What I didn't expect was they were going to give him an idol and say, here, play it now. I know. Now, Production. This week, I'm going to predict that Tika manages to stay safe. I'm not sure exactly how, but I think the trio will manage it so Carolyn doesn't have a decision to make. Wow. If she does, I think, uh, as we've already kind of hinted at through the whole podcast, I think she'll get back together with Jam Jam and vote out Josh. Mm. Uh, if the Soka tribe has to go to tribal council, I think there could be a series of idols played that results in Matt being sent packing after playing his fake. Mm, that's um, interesting. I believe that that series would start when Danny tries to target new tribe member, Jamie. She plays her idol. J Danny plays his in response. Matt plays his fake. And that's that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jeff Probst is like, yay, this is what I wanted. <laughs> um, but I don't think the Soka tribe will be going to tribal council. I think it will be Ratu headed to tribal council this week. Mm. Now, we know Carson obviously has an idol, so he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And I saw too much focus on Matthew in the preview to worry about him. Mm. I think even after all these days have passed, things are going back to Ken. Uh, part of it will be that when Carson plays his idol, I don't think he'll be targeting Matthew because Matthew gave him information and a lifeline for the future. Sure. Um, we know Carson likes to aim at the strategic players, and I think Kane is probably the most obviously strategic and knowledgeable on the tribe, aside from Carson himself. Really, the only question is, does Carson even need his idol in the end? I mean, he's going to play it, obviously, as he should. It's just a question of, is there going to be a rebound vote on Kane, or is Carson going to get in good enough with Matthew and some others that they just all decide to go against Kane? So that's See, I'm curious, prediction. though, about Lauren in that situation. Mm -hmm. I thought that was where you were going to be heading was towards Lauren, just because of all of the things that transpired at the beginning, where um, between she and Brandon and there was some some bad blood that kind of came up there just because I'm trying to remember all of the, the components yeah. of it, but... There but was I think it just shifted to Kane because Kane was the one who actually tried to vote Brandon off. Oh yes, okay. I do I do remember that now? Um, oh, that's interesting. But does what what does Lauren have? Doesn't she have something? Oh, because here we go. Um, 
piece of cartridge in a pear tree. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot to check the scorecard. Yeah. Uh, She does have some sort of advantage. Because she went. Well, okay. She lost her vote, but she has it now because Matt was the only one who lost twice. No, I don't know that she did. Did she get an advantage? I thought she did because they all went and reached their hand in the little bag. And I thought she got. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, she had this. She had the bank a vote. Okay. So she didn't actually lose her vote. She banked her vote. So she has two votes this time. Okay. All right. Or two votes whenever she decides. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Two votes whenever she wants. So I don't think it would make sense to target her when she already has two votes on her own. Yes, but do they know that that's what she has? Yeah. Oh, they do know. Yeah, because she had told. She. I, I think by now word had spread, and I think. Because I think Maddie said that at least she knew, and I think maybe Jamie knew, and Kane knew. I, I think probably at this point they all know. All right, well, that's interesting. Um, I'm picking Josh. I'm just going to say it's Josh. Okay. I mean, I agree with all of the the assessments that you've made, but I I just don't know how... I just don't know how Tika saves themselves at this point. <laughs> well, I think the part of it... So here's what I'm thinking. We're in the portion of the game where there will probably be a reward challenge and an immunity challenge. So the other tribes are going to have to sit like half their tribe. I know. Well, not quite half, but they're going to. So they're going to have to decide whether they're trying, you know, what they're trying to win without knowing what's going to be coming in the immunity challenge. Right. So they might end up with someone who is weaker in the immunity challenge. And that's you know, weaker in one way or another. I don't mm, necessarily mm-hmm. mean physically. Right. Um, and so, you know, maybe maybe that's how it happens. Mm, it'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to watch. Yes. Um, and hopefully no more advantages, as someone's shirt says. Please. Um, We're done. Yes. Now, as we wrap up, I want to encourage people to check out the RJP patron program at Rob has a website.com slash patron. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get access to all the special podcasts there just for patrons, plus the Facebook groups and discord. Uh, so support shows like ours and everything on the network by becoming a patron at Rob has a website.com slash patron, or click on the link at our Rob has a website.com slash Y X lost feed page. Uh, also, make sure you're subscribed to all the reality TV wrap ups podcasts by going to Rob has website dot com slash wrap ups feed and selecting your podcast service of choice. Uh, you'll not only find us, uh, you'll find the B&B, Taryn Stockwatch, Shannon's Survivor International and podcasts on a number of other shows that aren't Survivor. Uh, mm-hmm. So you can definitely uh, well, you should definitely go to Rob has website.com slash wrap ups feeds. Um, I did also, uh, on a separate note, the latest episode of Truth Unrestricted is out with me as a guest. Uh, this covers a topic that uh, is the, the, the host, Spencer, uh, called the explicit paradox. And I don't know that anyone else knows what that means because I didn't know what that meant when we started the podcast, but he explains it. It's like, uh, it's like, well, as we ended up doing, so we recorded the podcast and then right after two things happened that contributed to the discussion. So we actually went back and recorded an addendum. Oh my gosh. So the explicit paradox is like calling yourself something that you obviously aren't. And Mm. in this case, it was, there's a pack in Illinois called the people who play by the rules and they're being accused of wait for it. Not being played by the rules, um, not playing by the rules, not my rules, but um, you know, the legal rules and so things like that. And then the other uh, aspect that we had to go uh, deals with the Streisand effect and drawing more attention to yourself than uh, you that while trying to quash something, drawing more attention to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that actually happened um, shortly after we re- initially recorded uh, with someone on Twitter who was trying to do that and ended up completely backfiring on them. <laughs> so we, we discussed that as well. Again, that's the Truth Unrestricted podcast. Does not deal with Survivor generally, uh, just, you know, often some political subjects, some other subjects. Uh, but, you know, you can check that out. Excellent. Um, and then I will be, I think, in a 
I have to check my calendar. Hope it's not tomorrow. But in a couple of days, I'll be uh, recording another episode of the Tradar podcast uh, as a guest for the finale of the Traders UK. Look at you just getting out there. I love it. Getting out there and yeah, getting back from, you know, a little vacation. So mm, That's so good. That's so mm. good. Well, unlike David Bloomberg, you can just find me here. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is what I do. And I am not retired. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I will say taking a vacation as a retired person is weird. Because mm. what exactly are you vacationing? Right. From? Exactly. In this case, it was a trip to see my son. So yes, that so was the, lovely. yeah, that was it. And my wife, you know, got a vacation out of it. Too. Yes. So, that's so good. You know, it was still a vacation. We, you know, uh, you know, had fun. Uh, it's just a little weird because I wasn't working. So. Right. Yeah. Which is good. So you were taking a vacation from all of your TikToks and podcasts. Right. No, I still did TikToks. You I know, know and you I, did. <laughs> and, and I had to prepare for this podcast. You did. So. You did a great job. So. Oh, well, thank you. And so well, did you. Oh, thanks, David Bloomberg. <laughs> and so I would like to thank Scott St. Pierre, who does all of the editing on not only the Why Blank Loss podcast, but all of the podcasts that you just heard David Bloomberg reference and more. So thank you, Scott, for the incredible work that you do. And also thank you to Will from America for the theme song of the Why Blank Loss podcast. We love it. It's super catchy. So thank you for that. And David Bloomberg, thank you for getting back on time so we could get this done this weekend more or less on time you know more or whole, less you were you were very thing. close yeah. so thank you and i always appreciate the opportunity to complain as i often do with various components of survivor as much as i love the game it infuriates me so so thank yeah. you for listening and allowing me an opportunity to do that yes yes and thank you jessica for uh, having the flexible schedule thank you to listeners uh, and viewers for you know, waiting an extra couple days. Mm -hmm. uh, we we should be back on our regular schedule for podcast release next week. Yes. So we will see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>